Hey everybody, I'm Tony Fleming from Fleming's Ultimate Garage. We are touring, looking at, going over, talking about a collector car. And you say, Tony, how do you know the difference between a collector car and a regular car? And that is a very good question. Thank you for asking that. I appreciate it. All right, so let's talk about that for a second. When, a, when I think of a collector car, I think about cars that are either the last or second to last kind of run of their, their model years. I think about cars with, with low production figures, right? Cars with special large engines or loaded with equipment and things like that or low production in general of a certain model. That's what we're talking about here on this car right here. We're talking about one of 70... Four. Sorry, I know I thought I was going to say 76, but it's with one of 74, which is even better, right? Um, and you say, well, Tone, how did you know that? Well, we did, uh, that's in the T-Bird registry. Uh, this is a real 428 car, born this way, has virtually every single option you could get from the factory. We believe it to be uh, what would be called a, a dealer demonstrator. And so, uh, sorry, factory demonstrator. I drove a dealer demonstrator in the beginning. The factory demonstrator is the factory guy would come, our factory rep, would come to the dealership in a new model, right, with all the equipment on the car because he got a free car to drive because he worked for the factory, but it also showed off the cars. And you could see those things, right? You could see all the things you could check off when you were ordering the cars because a lot of times you didn't know what they were yet when the first cars first came out. He had to wait for a few cars to come to figure out everything. This right here, almost every single item you get, we're going to spend some time going over all that stuff. I want to show you stuff that works that shouldn't work 60 years later. It just, I mean, it's amazing, amazing, amazing. And uh, I'm excited to get started. So let's get started. All right, so we want to talk about quality of paint, but I want to talk about styling and I want to talk about this car in particular. Why? Not because we have it for you, but because we have it and it won't last long because it's so rare. This is an original IV yellow car. Basically, this car, except for the, uh, probably a couple small things, but for the radial tires that are on it, right, and not the bias ply tires it should have on it because this makes the car drive so much nicer. But if you want bias ply tires, we may have a set that we could swap out. However, having said that, uh, the way it rolled off the, show, the showroom floor in this color combination with black leather, not just black, right? The tonneau cover, the sport cover back there was added. Okay, that comes off and this car becomes a four passenger with a console down the middle. It's just a cool car inside. So we left the, the Roadster cover on there just so you could see that. Um, and we like to talk about quality of paint, but before I get into all that, I want you just to see effort. Right? You say, what do you mean effort? Well, I'm talking about effort for restoration. We're talking about all new chrome bumpers, new restore grill, this piece of molding, these headlight bezels. These right here are turn signals. They function the way they're supposed to. Turn that turn signal on and you can see this blinking from inside the car. You say, Tony, isn't that all supposed to work that way? Isn't that exactly? Yes, but that's not how cars come. 50, 60 years later, most of these things on these cars, people don't spend the effort to make them work properly. This could take four or five hours just to make one turn signal work. That's a shortcut. People do take shortcuts all the time. In this case here, we're going to prove that somebody put a lot of effort into it by doing these things. All right, so back to my original statement, which was about the paint. And I want to show you the quality of that so you can see the ceiling in here. Yellow is not an easy color to see really well, but what I want you to focus on mostly is the uh, quality and, and, and clarity of the lead letters, right? Anybody can see the letters in there, but I want you to see how crisp they are. The crisper the letter, the crisper the letter, or the more crisp the letter, okay, the better the finish on the paint. This car here with long panels, like look how straight those panels are. These are really long, and those are difficult panels to do in a body shop, right? You have to work the metal a long time, and you say, well, Tony, if it's not a rusty car, what do you have to do? Well, it doesn't really matter. Over 60 years, hot, cold, hot, cold, shrink, whatever, maybe get a door ding, right? That doesn't make rough for rust, but that has to all be repaired and made to look straight so that when you look at the side of the car and you go, wow, that's a great looking car, now you know why. All right, so I'm standing at the front of the car. Duh, you are. Well, I'm standing here for a reason because I want you to see that if you go to a car show, so for many of our clients who get a car like this, they just want to drive it, man. They don't really care much about what's under the hood. They just want to wheel it, whatever. You might want to go to a car show. You might want to show a friend in your garage. You might want to uh, tinker on it yourself, right? Because all the hard work, the restoration has been done. You might just want to tinker, but whatever. Whatever that may be. 
This right here is very authentic. This is a show winning engine compartment in my opinion. All right, and I'll tell you why I say that. So as I walk around here and I look at all of the work that's been done, it's the little things like uh, the decal placement, right? Uh, showing us that uh, this has some option on it that you may have never even seen before. For instance, this has cruise control called pilot control from Ford, right? Uh, maybe cruise control was uh, patented by somebody else at the time and they couldn't use that. So uh, Ford hoses, um, painted the correct engine color and, and everything's not black, right? Everything is either painted here, detailed, different color bolts, insulation, this right here to keep rain and things like that from coming in the engine compartment. Like all of this little detail stuff uh, is done. Power brakes, power steering, factory air conditioning, right? cruise control and forget all of that stuff 428 cubic inches of, of big block Ford right with some serious power they rated a 335 but it's not the 335 that's the that's the impressive part it is the torque when this thing gets up and goes man this car for its size rolls down the road especially from a roll and sounds great too it's very much what I would call a sports luxury car but again if you want to go to a car show or whatever you can see how beautifully chrome and detailed everything has been done in here just nice man somebody spent a lot of time and effort uh, making this car for you all right so if you've never seen this work from the 62 Lincolns right uh, this is a ballet the early 60s Lincoln 61 62 Lincoln right had this all going on back then this is 2023 right 60 years later and many cars didn't come back until the 2000s when Mercedes and a couple others did these complete folding one touch pieces. So check this out. This is super cool in the sense that this is like a ballet. You can watch this whole thing happening. And this would go much faster when the car is running, but it's going pretty well right now. Circa 1966. We're running just on battery power. That's a big heavy top to be bringing up here. Check that out, boom. And then this folds itself together and then folds itself up. And then I would just latch this right here and then off you would go. That is cool. All right, so I wanted to show the trunk because the trunk is actually functional, right? Uh, you just hit the button, it opens up, it's motorized. All of this here is good for storage and soft bag luggage or behind the rear seats for uh, even more luggage uh, that can go there. Full size spare right this has all been restored and redone because these things right here uh, are what make everything go it even showing you how it screws itself down to hold itself into place right this is amazing technology listen 1966 is what we're talking about early 60s is when this was adopted and all of this works just like it's supposed to i love to watch it do that uh, and i see some of the things that they add in here is delimiters for the top so it can't go too far by accident like they really gave this a lot of thought the jack stowage is over there and uh i don't know i get excited man when you see stuff like this and it works it is cool so you're walking up to this beautiful car and you go man that is a great looking car i'm so glad i got it but you know what you're going to like even more once you get inside? I want to spend a few minutes going through that with you. You need to see uh, just the styling and things like that that are in here. So let's get started. Oh, you say, oh, Tone, the steering wheel is broken. The steering column, uh, was it in an accident? Come on, man. Come on. Really? Hold on. Let me just hit the power seat button real quick. Let me just hit the power seat button real quick and let me talk to you a little bit about that. How you doing? Mm -hmm. Nice. Easy to get in and out, right? 
once you put it in drive, it locks it in place. Power windows, little stuff like this. Uh, even like this, this this is a restoration. I should talk about the options first and I'll come back to the quality of the restoration because I'm gonna get lost. Power passenger seat, right? Power windows, stereo, air conditioning, okay? Uh, full array of gauges. The speedometer is super cool. Even though it says it here, it's got a scroll that goes across there. All these gauges here are nice. Oil pressure, fuel, temp, uh, and, and amps. Uh, showing you brake warning lights. <sighs> Steering wheel is nicely restored. The door panels. This is leather, not vinyl. Console. You could get a bench seat back then. Crazy, I know. But this was this was a loaded car, man, and somebody spent a lot of money restoring it. They just did little detail stuff like these lights work and I'll tone it. Aren't they all supposed to work? Well, they're supposed to work, but nine times out of ten, they do not. The door lights over there do not work. The seatbelt light right here doesn't work. 99% of the time, the clock doesn't work, and guess what? The clock works in this car. This is a nice car. All right, so let's close up this video. We talked about a lot. I'm going to run down a little bit more, and I'm sorry if I'm boring you, but there's a lot to recap here, man. We are talking about a car restored the way it's supposed to be and the way it rolled off the showroom floor, including things like uh, the pilot, cruise control, air conditioning, power windows, power convertible tops, leather interior, right? We saw the clock working and the uh, seatbelt light bulb, like all of that stuff, man. Just, I mean, nice, nice, nice. 428 in a T-Bird makes it already rare. Add all that stuff up there. This could be the only one of its kind. I'm throwing that out there and I'm challenging anybody to challenge me okay to say i found another one just like this this is one of one it is the only one you can't get a marty report back that far unfortunately i wish we could you can't get them for mustangs or for t-birds or anything like that but i'm telling you there is no other car out there like this and it is very very special i get excited to see something like this when you hear one of 74 that's a low number but i'm telling you this is one of one in this engine color uh, an option combination. It is truly, truly amazing. The last little bit I wanted to tell you is, if you wanted to, I think wire wheels look really great on this car. And while uh, it may not be authentic, the T-Bird wire wheel that goes on this car looks great. We can talk about that uh, when you call and we discuss how to get it in your garage. Anyway, call us, 301 816 1000 We'll tell you all about this 428-powered uh, T-Bird convertible. And uh, if you don't mind, hit the like button down below there. It helps us get the message out. I appreciate all that help that you give, the love. And uh, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. we got new stuff coming out all the time. And maybe share it with your friends. They might be interested as well. And I'll see you on the next one.